Y'all got to... <laughs> Chris and Tiffany here with Hi Steve Cruzy and welcome to tonight's live and a very distinct possibility of a dog chewing a toy in the background. <laughs> I swear to God, this dog just it's like he senses it. He's like, my God, they hit the live button. I will now make noise at the bottom of the microphone. Right? Yeah. He's perfectly calm and quiet all day long until we start this. Yeah. 
then he's going to be noisy. And right there. But we do have a lot of people in the. Yes, we do. A lot of people are here tonight. Let's go back up a little bit here. California Linda shares, good afternoon, everyone. It's another sea day prior to Honolulu. We will try to catch a live show in between cruise activities. Uh, I saw one of your cruise activities was ukulele lessons. I like it. I do, too. I would, I would <laughs> mind a ukulele lesson. Yeah. And then until the fun, good afternoon. Have a great afternoon cruising, California Linda. Um, well, yeah. I mean, they're they're on their way. Yeah. Heading back towards San Francisco. Yeah. Enjoying some ukulele classes. Yeah. Dilly, good afternoon, Tiffany and Chris. Uh, cruising Karen's here. Tara, Tara's here. Bajarn, Jeremy, and Cheryl Cruise Adventures. And Attila and Raymond. Yeah, Ray is here. Well, welcome, everybody. Again, kind of giving everybody a moment to get in and say their hellos. And then we will get started. Like I said, ignore the dog chewing his toy in the background. How has everybody's week been? Anything good? Anything exciting? Ours has been none of the above. No, it's been pretty quiet. Yeah, it's actually been a quiet week. Peaceful, calm, no extra drama. Mm -hmm. I like the drama-free weeks. I do. Well, it's been drama-free at home. It's never drama free in the cruising world. The cruises, they just cannot go drama free anymore. No. And it's a thing. And we'll get into that. And we will get into that. But it has been quiet. I did hear on a bit of authority, I guess you could call it, that the remainder of the 2026 cruises, the ones we are waiting for, should be available come this autumn. So. But autumn can meet a whole bunch of things. Yeah. So Should I'm Cody guessing August, September time frame. Welcome, Cody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So probably just hopefully two, three, four more months, and we'll have our group cruise date. Really worried. Getting excited about that. I wish it would hurry up and get here yes. so we can pick it. Cruising Karen says, star testing this week. Lots of long days, but a sure sign that the school year is winding down. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they've only got about six more weeks of school, if that. I know I'm already planning the graduation banquet for all the minors at that work. Worked. I actually completely forgot that school was getting ready to come to an end. I mean, with the kids grown and gone, the school calendar just kind of yeah. Goes away from my head, you know, and no longer really thinking about it. It's just, I usually realize that something's going on with, you know, schools out for a holiday when I stop seeing school buses. Thank you. That's kind of the, oh, well, yes, right, school's out sort of thing. She is here. She says, hello, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Us too. We are here too. Um, yeah, if I, it's amazing, I guess, how much stuff you quit paying attention to. Bunch of kids are grown and gone. Mm -hmm. I had no idea school was. I remember those star tests though. Mm -hmm. So much fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you figure out they've been obviously been around for a long time because I haven't been in school, you know, in like five years <laughs> since I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> The youngest graduated two years ago. <laughs> I'm only 25. <laughs> You're confusing me. Okay. You're older. That's why the kids have graduated. You're a cradle robber. You've robbed this cradle. <laughs> no. No? No. But I'm 25. In your head. And you've been like 30 for what? Six years now? <laughs> In my head. In your head. Uh, Sean O'Connor, hi from Royal Creeping Harmony, just left Roatan on the way to Costa Maya. Awesome. That's two people out on the ship. Yes, I love it. Me too. Yeah, I mean, two people out cruising and still taking time to watch the show. Oh, I know. I'm impressed. I've said it before. I wouldn't stop and watch my show. <laughs> <laughs> Their camera would just be on the background, and we'd be like, where are they? They're like cruising. 
I mean, honestly, I'd like to go on a cruise. I say we go on a cruise. I say we go. I'm not getting a firm commitment here. No? We can't for at least six months. No, it's been two out of the six already. Okay, so we can't for at least four months. Yeah, it's about four more months. I'm thinking September-ish. I'm still determined I think we ought to go in September. Okay. Yep, everybody enjoy your cruise. All right, so what has been going on in cruising this week? You know what I saw the most in cruising this week? You guys are going to have to help me out with this. The most of the stories and stuff we've covered in this last week is all about either unfortunate, terrible accidents that have been happening or cruise entitlement. Cruise entitlement. Is that just the new way that we cruise now? Is that just now the way life is that everybody thinks they're entitled to something that they're not? When did cruising stop becoming the pure joy of vacation and instead become a gimme, gimme, mine, mine, I'm owed, owed, owed situation? Unfortunately, it's uh, finally catching up to cruising, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember it being like that, even growing up. You know, it only seems like it's the last, what, 10 years? If that much, that it's become all about me, me, me. Mm -hmm. You know, Cody says after Cody, it seems, or after COVID, it seems like it. Right. And, and that does seem like where it's like really shot up to the top. You know, we started hearing a lot about it during COVID. And now it just seems to be like every part of our society, but it's really getting bad in our cruising world. She just says it's not just about cruising, it's everywhere. And you might be noticing it, especially in cruising, because that's what you're focused on. Well, yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about cruising and cruising channels. I do story about cruising. So that's where I see it the absolute most. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just did a story this week about people that are so entitled that they throw room stewards out of cabins that room stewards are cleaning because they want to shower. They want to take it. They're not supposed to be there. They know they're not supposed to be in there, but they're so entitled that they can just tell the room steward, but I'm platinum. Get out. You know, I want to take a nap. Get out. She just says, hate to say it, but it's a new generation. It's those kids that were never told no and got a trophy just for being there. But, you know, I, I hate to say this, but if you actually look at some of the videos and like see these people they're not they're, they're not 20 25 year olds they're 35 40 45 year olds you know it's not like it's these 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 new kids i'm not saying they're any better or any worse but when you look at some of the worst case scenarios these are grown ass adults you know that are only you know not all that many years younger than us in appearance that have this kind of attitude and i don't know i think you're going to see a shift and a change in cruising over the next couple of years over this particular type of attitude over this particular type of entitlement you know i talked about it in the video where Platinum, diamond, faster to the fun. It's weak as they have the option and the opportunity. It's a perk. Perk. Not, not a right. It's a privilege to be able to go and drop off their carry-on bags in their cabin. Then you leave. And then you come back when the rooms are ready. Can you imagine getting on the ship every time with our carry-on bags? Being able to go put them in our room and not have to worry about them again until later. How nice would that be? That would be great, but... They're right. Stop doing that. I'm sure if people keep doing this. Well, you know, I'm sure you know it only takes one bad apple to ruin, ruin the barrel. Mm -hmm. And these are multiple bad apples that when Carnival, has, you know, Carnival in particular has to come out and say every month, look, this is the rule. Stop doing this. And then they've got examples. I want to take a nap. 
I want to take a shower. I mean, these rooms are in disarray. They're not even done. Room stewards in there working, and they're like, get out. I want to take a nap. Or they want to start unpacking and putting their stuff away and arranging their room. No. You know, and even the story one took their sign and sell card, their platinum sign and sell card, and stuck it in the room steward's face to let them know how right they were and how wrong he was for telling them not to be in there. So how long before perks like that go away over the actions of a few yeah. will affect the majority. Cruising Karen says she sees it in middle school kids. Parents have stopped parenting and the kids are very entitled. Um, California Linda says that's why Princess does not allow a stop and drop. Sheikah is right on with her statement. And then so many people have the perks to abuse Easy these day. days. Yeah. And then Connie, I wonder if it's to do with Facebook cruise groups stirring them up. That is a possibility. Uh, Facebook groups, while they're great and people can get together and prepare for their cruise and share information, there are people that will purposely go on Facebook groups just to put in misinformation, just to tell stories and lies. And people, in my guess, have no lives of their own and want to stir up trouble. And they get passengers stirred up. And then, then there's always people who believe it. Mm -hmm. and think it's true, and, oh, that's what we should do, and, I mean, all kinds of stuff. You know, I saw, there was a, a little bit of story on it. There was a TikTok video, and she was, and I don't know if you guys seen this, it had to do with the water bottle. She was clearly on a carnival ship. You could tell it was a carnival water bottle. It had the tag that goes on it. You know, they, they put the two big ones in there mm -hmm. you can purchase, right? She took one, opened it. I guess, drank the water, then filled it up with tap water out of the sink and glued the lid back on and set it back on the shelf like she never touched it. Okay. Now, whether or not she paid for it or didn't pay for it, it's still that type of video where it says, hey, all you got to do is just steal and glue the lid back on. They'll never know. But what about the next passenger that comes on that actually wants to buy that water? Mm -hmm. These are the types of things that people are putting out there. And that comes from things like Facebook groups and, and junk and uh, or the worst ones I've seen recently that are just, I don't understand why they even create them. I've seen some TikTok videos where they're looking off the side of a cruise ship and it's captured. We were being followed by pirates. Oh, I've seen those. Have you seen them? Yes. And it's the pilot boat? It's the pilot boat. And it's the pilot boat talking about they're getting attacked by pirates and it's a pilot boat coming along. <laughs> the ship. Why? <laughs> why 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 you know being on social media and we put stuff out there we make videos and we do lives man, sometimes i detest social media uh -huh. i really really do for the garbage that people put out there and especially when it comes to cruising because it gives cruising a bad name yeah until it says yes exactly just want trouble it's a sport for them some of them are jerks yeah, yeah. I agree. James is here. Good evening, Chris and Tiffany and High Seas Cruisers. Welcome, James, James, how are you? Yeah, how are you feeling? How is your your uh, shoulder, right? Shoulder? Uh, yeah, rotator cuff. Rotator cuff, yeah. How are you doing with that? Sheikha says, regardless, she needs to be banned from the cruise ships. And then Cruising Karen also brought up uh, the lady in Houston. I'm oh, my further. God. Yes. That story still has me so angry. I, I just, things with the kids. I, whoo, give, give me a second on that one. Alien frequencies here. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. But yeah, the thing with the kids, that pisses me off more than anything. How do you have kids? I mean, this starts in Houston. You decide as an adult, to take your eight-year-old and your six-year-old and go, I want to go on cruise vacation. You leave your place in Houston, go to Florida, board a cruise ship for a week, and you just left your eight and your six-year-old at home. The video camera. With a webcam. A webcam. Because that is safe for children. That's going to take care of them. I guess my thing is, is she... 
was living in a luxury condo, she should have gotten a luxury nanny. Well, they called it a luxury high rise. So, you know, that doesn't necessarily speak to, you know, someone's pocketbook. But if she couldn't afford to take the kids or care for the kids, she shouldn't have been on the ship in the first place. You know? Period. But I don't understand that the mentality that's going towards children. I think it's almost as bad as the entitlement. Have you seen the, you know, and I've seen these ones where people forget their kids in the backseat of the car. So now they say, put something important in the backseat of your car so you remember to look back there so you don't leave your child back there. What happened to the days when the child was the important thing in the backseat? I have never once put one of the girls in the back seat, got out of the car and said, oh, I forgot I put a child in there. Um, Nellie, welcome Nellie, says the kids can take care of themselves. Ha 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 joke. Nowadays, it seems like, I don't know, to me, parenting is going more towards tablets. So parents are thinking, yeah, the kids can take care of themselves. Not while you're on a cruise ship out in the middle of the ocean. You know, maybe if she was like, hey, I'm going to run to the corner store for a second. I'll be back in five minutes. I still wouldn't do that either. No, because they're legally, they're not old enough to be there by themselves well, or any amount. Of time. It was never a problem to take kids. No. She says, I'm glad she got arrested. I am too. And then apparently to make, you know, according to the story now, just to make matters worse, she was combative and like tried to lie about her identity and was argumentative and stuff about the whole situation. And if you like try to lie about your identity, you clearly know you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't even come back and go, oh, oh, well, I'm slow and, and I didn't know that or I have a mental problem. And you tried to lie to the cops to not get arrested. You knew you did something wrong. So, yeah, I have no sympathy for her. None. I have sympathy for those kids. Bajarne said, not. I'm not comfortable leaving my 13-year-old daughter in charge for an hour while we went to the grocery store. Yeah, I, I struggled with that one. Yeah, because you, I mean, even at 13, you still wonder. But that's the difference between attentive parents who have raised children who are now productive members of society with families of their own. Versus being a parent that's now in jail and probably will never ever see your kids again. So, you know what? I hope you enjoyed that Miami Vice by the pool because you ain't getting that again anytime soon. Nellie says, but seriously, they probably take care of their own self better than mama. She probably does this all the time. I, it kind of sounds like that. And then she said, my Subaru tells me to look in the back when I turn it off. So does the Ford. So does mine, which is really annoying because there's nobody back there. It still reminds me every time. Uh, but, I mean, remember, my kids are adults. We got grandkids now. I just, I never once forgot my child was in the back seat. You know, I, I don't get it. I don't get how that happens. And I never will understand that. And I'll never understand how you don't take your children on vacation with you unless you had left them with somebody that you trusted to watch them and you knew we're going to care for them. I understand parents getting away. Mm -hmm. To provide for your children before, you don't go, hey, kids, every once in a while, come by and wave at this webcam. You'll be all right. Because a six-year-old six, six year and eight-year-old obviously can you know cook all their own meals and take care of all their own situations. Attila says it's on the local news today. She got arrested and is in jail looking at two years in prison, apparently. Poor kids. I hope they get a better situation in a stable home. Uh, the story did say they go went to other family members, which, again, why didn't she ask other family members to start with? Yeah. You know, Robert says, good evening. James says, hello, everyone. Thank you all. I am waiting for another set MRI and x-rays. We'll know on the 26th if surgery will be needed. But apparently I have banged up the shoulder along with the torn rotator cuff. It still sounds really painful. Yeah, it does. I, I heard those rotator cuff injuries hurt. Yeah. 
hurt. Attila says, that's why we never went on a real vacation, just me and my wife, for many years while the kids were growing up. If we cruised, all the kids went too, plus Disney trip and so forth. I'll take the kids. We did the same. We, have, we did exactly the same. It's only been in the last few years where you've been able to go, hey, you know what? We can go when we want, travel when we want, and not have to worry about the kids' schedules. But that's because they're grown and gone from home. Never once did that cross our mind until the kids rolled them up. Yeah. The jar jokingly, I have wanted, I've wanted to forget they were in the back seat. They were never quiet enough. <laughs> That's the other part, too. Even when they're really annoying, it's not like they're quiet back then. Uh, you know, and we have four kids, three of them are girls. No offense against the ladies out there, but you know what? When y'all are young, you know. Children, y'all are not quiet. Girls can giggle and laugh. And how do you forget they're there? Dylan slept most of the time. So <laughs> Dylan slept a lot in the back seat. Yes, he was a sleeper. But even then, you couldn't forget him. No. Um, Karen says she'll be away from them now. She'll be in jail for a couple of years. That's good. Sheikah says, hopefully you won't need surgery at James. Yeah, I hope not either, but. Um, James says, very painful. Thank you, Sheikah. Yeah, rotator cuffs are painful. Yeah. And Ellie says, ha ha, that bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sheikah, we had grandma and grandpa watch our kids. I now watch the grandkids so my kids can go on vacation. Oh, yeah, we've already volunteered. You need grandparents? We're right here. We're right here. We've also volunteered to take the grandkids on the cruises with us. Yes. So we have we have no problem with that. I'd love to cruise with the grandkids and stuff like that. Um so yeah, it, I guess it's all it's a whole different mentality thing, but instead, even on the cruise ships, I've never wanted to tell the room steward to get out of our room. I've never wanted to act like it, it's almost like they act like the crew members are more of their servants than crew members, you know, and, and I know they're there to work while you're on vacation. They take care of your cabin. They serve you in the dining facilities. Um, they help you around the ship, but they're not servants. They're not slaves. You know, they're doing a job. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you. I've been to a lot of places where they're not near as nice and polite and as efficient as crew members on board cruise ships are. They're just not. You know, the crew members to me work hard and they are the app. What the? They are absolutely the star of a cruise. A cruise would not be as much fun in as much entertainment and such a joyous experience without the crew members on board. Yeah. They make a cruise. Crew members can make or break your cruise, they really can. Uh, Nellie says, I think I heard some lines or ships would not allow people in the hall, um, which I didn't think they did either because they had they keep the doors closed off until they're ready to let everybody in. But I guess if you're platinum, if, if your cruise line, not all cruise lines have it. Carnival's the big one that has it. <coughs> and you can go sit in there and drop off your bag as long as you have the perk. Diamond, platinum, a sweet guest. Or faster to the fun. That's an option to simply go drop off your back. It's a great perk. It's an awesome perk. Of all the perks the cruise lines offer, I like that one because it's so convenient just to not carry it around. You know? Because we each have a carry-on bag mm -hmm. to get on the ship and be able to put it down and go eat. Especially mine because it's got all the monsters in it. Well, plus you see all the bags that are in like the buffet um all around while they're waiting for those rooms to open to not have to be that person mm -hmm. is a perfect perk it's an awesome perk it's good for the cruise line it doesn't cost them any money they can offer a perk doesn't cost them any money passengers think it's a great perk i think it's a great perk because now i don't have to carry on my bag it's a win-win for both sides but if you act like a jerk enough times to these crew members and the crew members continue to report issues or problems with the entitled the cruise line's going to go, fine, nobody. Yeah. You can't do it no more. We're going to take it away. That's exactly what will happen. Because why? 
it doesn't cost the cruise lines any money to take it away. Yeah. It's not like they're going to lose any money over it. Chica said that is very rude. Stewards are not guest servants. Exactly. They are not. Um, but the funny part is, I guarantee you, though, if that perk ever gets taken away, the ones that complain the hardest that I'm platinum, I want a shower, I want a nap, put their card in a room steward's face, will be the ones that will complain the loudest that something is being stolen from them. Mm -hmm. They will be the ones to complain the most, even though they're the ones that cause the problem. So I always say for new cruisers, I know a lot of you guys, very experienced cruisers, but any new ones that come through here, be nice to your crew members. Yes. Trust me. Trust me. A little, just a little, little respect. And they will earn more. But if you give your crew members a little bit of respect, a little bit of courtesy, a little bit of just show them a little bit of love, man, they will take care of you all day, every day. They will break their backs to take care of you for a little respect. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of courtesy. And plus, if you take five minutes to learn something about them, talk to them, man, they're some of the most interesting people. And they have stories to tell. Good stories. Because they've been on these, some of them have been on the ships for years. Yeah. They have excellent stories to tell. I mean, we were on Voyager of the Seas when that wind hit and the ship went sideways. Our room steward, he was like, Yeah, did you guys feel that? And he was, you know, telling us about it. Then that's not the first time it's happened to him. Uh, he says now it starts to tell him he just puts one foot on the wall and leans against the other, <laughs> rides it out for a minute. He says, yep, it's happened multiple times. But the first time it happened to me, I, I was so scared. You know, take a minute with these crew members. They, they're some of the best people. Yeah. Um, James says, a uh, sad story. I know here in Cincinnati, they have a case where a mother fell asleep for 12 hours. And when she woke up, the nine week old was dead in her car seat. Oh, so, yeah. Stories like that, they're heartbreaking mm -hmm. for, for a nine week old. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, I hate to see stuff like that happen. It's just as bad as that lady who left her baby in the playpen and went to Puerto Rico. Yeah. You know. But John says, having traveled a lot in the military, I really appreciate the crew on a ship. Never had a single problem. Yeah. And I will say one thing, you know, when you mentioned it, having traveled a lot with the military too, I've had the opportunity before I ever started cruising to talk to people from different places around the world. And one thing I learned that no matter what the news says and what the Politico, this and that says, you go to some of these places, it's people. It's people trying to be people. You know what I mean? Just your average people yeah. <laughs> trying to be people. And that's what I remember the most was the people I met that were just excited to meet somebody from someplace else. Um, I mean, crazy, just, and, and little things from when I was in the here. One time, we had to land in Prague in Czechoslovakia. So we were on a, we were actually, we were on a, a chartered commercial flight. So it was a commercial airline, but it was all military personnel. And we had to land in, in Prague to fuel up and stuff like that because we were traveling across Europe. So they said we could get off the plane in Prague. But we had, oh my God. But we had to stay in the international terminal, and they actually went and blocked off the end of the terminal and put the Czech military there on the on the other side of the barricade. So I guess if you were looking from it, looking at it from the outside, it looked like Americans and Czechoslovakian soldiers were looking at each other, staring at each other across this barrier. Right now, let me tell you what's really happening. We were trading cigarettes, um, swapping different food items talking about, you know, how their military was versus ours. And the parts probably nobody wanted to see is when we were holding each other's weapons. <laughs> they were like, hey, you know, here, hold this. You want to check it out? And we're doing that. Because that's what happens when soldiers actually meet each other. You know what I mean? Uh, and I know that's a silly story, but that's uh, what I remember from traveling are stories like that. I learned how to make vodka. Uh, out of potatoes, 
from uh, Australian military. They can make vodka out of the potatoes in a tent. Uh, Attila says, be nice to your cabin stewards. Uh, yes. James says, yes, love the hardworking cabin stewards. They are awesome. Attila says, I always chat a little with them too. I didn't want to hold them up from work, but just a little chat. They are always so, so busy. I bet the ships are still understaffed. Um, Karen says, people are people. Everyone deserves respect and empathy. And Desiree is here. Good evening, Desiree. Yeah. And, you know, I did the story about the couple that was, they were mad that the room steward came in their room, even though they had the snoozing sign out there. Because a lot of cruise lines have a policy that if they don't see you in 24 hour period, the room steward can't say, you know what, some type of interaction with these folks, they're supposed to check on you. I remember a story a few months ago that the lady, uh, she was talking about security, came to the dining room table and, and asked to speak to her off to the side. Because the room steward hadn't seen her in 24 hours. And they wanted to make sure she wouldn't have problems. And they went and pulled her from the dinner table politely. And asked to speak to her off to the side. And it was just to confirm. Because they'd seen the husband. But they hadn't seen the wife in over 24 hours. And so they wanted to do a welfare check on her. Separated from the husband. Just to make sure. Hmm. Well that's good to know. Mm -hmm. No. There's. It, when you look into these kinds of stories, there's a lot that goes on in the background that you don't know about. And because if you're the type of cruiser that enjoys saying hi to your cabin steward in the hall, you talk to them, you, you know, communicate with them and you're in and out of your room and you're just waving hi when you come on and off the ship and stuff like that. You're checking all of the safety boxes by just being that kind of person. Mm -hmm. And so those rules never touch you. You don't ever see them. You don't hear about them and you don't know about them because they can say, I've interacted with Chris and Tiffany five times today. And for us, that's pretty normal. We are always talking to our room stewards. And so those types of things where they have to check on you every 24 hours never, ever come up. But these folks put the snooze and sign out and didn't want to check in, didn't talk to the room steward, didn't interact with the room steward, and it triggered a safety check. And then they got mad about it. John says, being the foreigner in another country gives you perspective. And uh, My room steward asked me if I was using my room on my last cruise. <laughs> Must have not have ever been in there. <laughs> but yeah, but that still counts as an interaction. Yes. He noticed that you weren't in there. He checked with you. You know, and it can be just something like, oh, I see you. Hey, are, are you using your room? You know, it's been super clean, tight. It doesn't look like you've been in there. No, I'm good. I'm just having a blast. Cool. That counts as a check-in. Yep. Yeah, that is a version, you know, even if it comes across jokingly, they're confirming your safety and, and welfare. So think about that when it comes to room stress. Not only are they cleaning all those rooms, taking care of everybody's needs, fetching the ice and the pillows, and the blankets and all this and kind of stuff. They're keeping an eye on you. But they're also keeping an eye out for your safety each and every day. Something else to think about next time before you want to be rude to your room steward. They're looking out for you yeah. in all the best ways possible. So I said you got to give it to crew members. You know, and not just room stewards, though. All of them. Mm -hmm. All of them. We've had some of our best conversations. With the guy mopping the water off the deck before. Yeah. You know, his job was to push around water and, and get it off the deck. And man, he loved to talk. Mm -hmm. If you spoke to him, he would tell you all kinds of stuff. Tons of stories he, he had just from mopping water off the deck. Remember that guy? Yeah. Yeah. He was on his last contract. Yeah. He was. He was ready to go home too, and he that whole group befriended him and wished him well. And oh yeah, he had a ton of friends that like to sit out on the deck. Yeah, he made friends with everybody. Linda shares the cabin stewards are awesome. I need ice daily to ice my knee, and my room steward makes sure I always have a full bucket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and these are all wonderful examples of. A little bit of politeness, a little bit of respect, and a little bit of courtesy. And 
Stage Wolf Street will take care of you all day long. They look at you funny, though, if you ever ask them if they need anything from town. Yeah, they, Tiffany gets more crazy looks from Rose Stewart than anything, because she walks around going, you want anything from Port? You want anything from Port? What can I get you from Port? And they're always just like, who is this lady? <laughs> yeah. But she don't care. Tilla said, I asked for ice in our cabin every afternoon, and one day he forgot. He felt so bad, but I didn't even notice. No worries at all for me. I told him <laughs> it's totally fine. Oh, yeah. Don't be careful playing jokes on them, especially. I made one cabin steward feel so terrible one time. And I know I've told the story before, and it was not my intention at all. The, the, the dog, the towel animal. Yeah. And just in case I, it's been a while since I told it, you know, he made us towel animals the whole time we're on there. And on the last day, he collected off all the towel animals, except for the dog one. He took the head from the dog towel animal. And left, the body. and left the body on the couch and took all the rest of them. So he was out in the hallway. I thought it was funny. I picked up the body of the towel animal dog, went out in the hallway like, oh, my God, my dog has no head. Ah. I mean, just totally over-dramatizing the entire thing. And the look on his face went from smiling to pure horror. Like he had messed up the world. I had to stop, and toss the town animal dog. It's been about five minutes letting him know consoling, it was consoling this poor room steward because he thought he'd screwed up and I was being serious. And I was like, oh, God, I'm, he got an extra tip because yes, <laughs> I felt like I tortured the poor room steward, which was never my intention. But yeah, I, I think I hurt that man's feelings there for a couple minutes before he realized we were playing. Yeah. But that look on his face from happy joy to like, oh my God, I'm about to get fired. I have not played that joke since then. No, no. Uh, absolutely. And they always there for things like that. Mm -hmm. um, Attila says, I gave him a five-star rating at the end of the cruise and the carnival survey. Be sure to fill out the surveys. Yes. We always make sure to take pictures of the cards or their name or something so that we can call them out by name because we've heard that if you do that. Yeah, it helps them in their promotions them. if you give their names and everything. We have never, or anytime we've done a crew survey, which is if they send us one of the crews, we always do them. We never give crew members anything less than five stars. First of all, we've never had less than five stars experience. So any of the ones that affect the people, we give it to it. I may put something that's, you know, not so great, a three or a four, as long as it doesn't affect a person. Mm -hmm. um, Sean said that they had a personal bartender one time. She was from Poland. Awesome person. Our favorite bartender was from Russia. Yeah. That we've ever had. And my God, she was hilarious. Uh, she was absolutely hilarious. She was on the Carnival Valor in 2017 or 2018. And she was the best. Um, she could, I always fill out their crew survey. Mm -hmm. Attila says, yes, take a picture of their name tags if they let you, even bartenders and MDR wait staff. Yeah, and I'm honest with them. I say, hey, man, you've done such a super awesome job. I want to make sure I mention your name. I'm going to take a quick picture of your name so I don't forget. Because mm -hmm. um, unlike those awesome members of the, the crew members, I cannot remember all those names. How they do it, I have no idea. I cannot do it. So I have to take those pictures and I'm just telling them for sure. Hey, you, you deserve all of my praise on this survey. I'm going to get your name so I don't forget it. Connie said the same thing. Take photos of the name tags. So, And I know in the MDR, on the last few cruises we've been on, they have the card there and it's got the head waiter, the assistant waiter, the maitre d'. Mm-hmm. And uh, drink person. Um, some I can't pronounce. <laughs> Most of them I can't. I've had I've had issues with that before, but I'm even honest with those crew members. I'm like, do you mind? How, how do you pronounce your name? I'm not familiar with it. Um, and they, I've never had one be like, oh, you don't know how to pronounce that. Most of the time, they're, they're happy to teach you mm -hmm. how to say it correctly. I believe that they're just 
Glad somebody wants to know the correct yeah. version and stuff. Somebody of actually them. wants to address them correctly instead of hey you, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, what did one comment I see? You cabin boy. They called them cabin boys mm -hmm. instead of room stewards. They were cabin boys. Mm -hmm. Tara says, I always give perfect scores on any survey for any company. If I had a problem, it's in the comments and does not affect the person's score. Yeah, not the person, not the crew member score. But I've never had a problem with a crew member that ever made me want to not give them that. Yeah. Um, you know, not every interaction with the crew member may go your way. But that doesn't mean that the crew member was ever impolite or acted unprofessionally before. Um, Alien says we had a server who asked them not to mention him by name because he didn't want to promote. He was happy where he was. <laughs> hey, that's honesty. Yeah, you know, if and you're happy where you are, then. Yeah, if you're good and you don't want to promote, I won't say a word about you. I'm okay with that, too. If that's exactly what they, that, that they want, I'm with them. California Linda says, excellent to Tara. James, I'm the same way. Never can remember all the names. So, yes, taking a picture of the name tag is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially because I think they deserve all the praise they can get. And then, then that's just me. Well, just to do what they do every week. I mean, there's thousands of people getting on that ship every four, five, seven days. And they remember their names and their faces. I, I've been working with the same bunch of people for five years and can't remember half their names. So. I forgot Tiffany's name twice last week. Yeah, he did. Yeah. But for them <laughs> to make that effort to remember everybody's names and the wait staff to remember, you know, I like coffee after dinner and they bring it, um, mm -hmm. you know, for them to make that conscious effort. It's, it's just mind blowing to me. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know how they do it. I could, I honestly could not remember. I would have to have a book full of notes. You know, flipping it through. Okay, you want this? Is, and maybe they do. Maybe they run over to the station and go, okay, Chris and Tiffany got to the table. All right, Tiffany likes coffee after dinner. I'm sure they do have notes, but you would never know. Mm. You would never know. Nope, never once. So this has gone from talking about cruise entitlement to the praising of crew members. I think that's an appropriate flow yeah that it's an appropriate flow because i do believe at the end of the day there are more people that cruise properly that cruise happily that enjoy simply being on a cruise can go with the flow of things that happen on cruises enjoy the crew members enjoy fellow passengers and go home and have a great cruise story to tell it's a super tiny percent of people that jack it up and mess with other people's cruising Tilla said, I had a young Jamaican guy in the MDR who was incredibly nice and serving us top notch. He was new and wanted to please the guests. So we had the, to especially call him out for praise. We had a server in uh, what cruise ship were we on? The Magic or the Wonder? That we would have sworn our server had been on the ship for years. Remember? Oh, yeah. And it was their first first week yeah and, it, and it, it was his first contract and he'd only been on the ship like two weeks when he got to our table and he was so nice and so professional we had sworn he'd have been there for years we asked him how many years you've been doing this he saw it like my second week <laughs> we were like what we were his first cruise and it was so impressive i went to the 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 restaurant manager afterwards and i said and i can't remember the young man's name it's been a couple years i said has he really only been here for two weeks? And he was like, yeah, why? I said, man, he was so good, so polite and so professional. I swore he would have been here for years. He said he'd only been here two weeks. I had to ask if that was true. He was too good. Mm -hmm. And the restaurant manager was like, thank you. Thank you for saying that. And it's like, hey, we were honestly and genuinely impressed. Yeah. Um, Jean says, yeah, but you can call Tiffany honey or sweetie until you remember. I do. Believe me. <laughs> I honestly actually only use her real name while we're on lives. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't call her by her name any other time. Linda shares, as soon as I approach crooners and wave, the barista has my flat white ready to go. 
That's coffees, baby. You yeah. should know all about those. I don't know what a flat white is. Our waiter remembers no bread at dinner. <laughs> Tiffany's had gotten in with, good with a couple of the baristas. When, on, uh, when we were in Alaska. The Discovery Princess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tiffany and that I guy. I was there three or four times a day. But she was there every morning. They were buddies. They even just be like, yep, I know you. Yeah, he's like the lavender and honey, huh? And I'm like, yes, lavender and honey. Yep, making her coffee ready to go every morning. So, yeah, we, we get it. That's the, that's the beauty of a crew member. And like I said, if you're not entitled to them and you don't, you know, show your ass, excuse my French, to the crew members, man, you will, you will have the absolute best time. And again, that's why I say crew members can honestly put a cruise above the top. Mm -hmm. They can make it so much more of an experience by your interactions with crew members. And you can't just ride around on the ship, get off, see some ports. All that's great and all, but I'm telling you that those extra touches that can you only get from crew members. Mm -hmm. Sheikah says that she only calls her husband by his name when she's mad at him. I get called something when she's mad at me, too. <laughs> it's not my name. <laughs> Just to be clear, it is not my name. <laughs> but I, too, have a I'm a trouble name. <laughs> I think everybody does. Huh? I think everybody does. I know I do. <laughs> I've heard it. I think me and the dog have the same name, by the way. Princess Buttercup. <laughs> no, I'm not Princess Buttercup. He's Princess Buttercup. The dog is. Uh, the dog has now been called Princess Buttercup because he's pretty entitled. <laughs> uh, Y'all can't see this, but I think he's broken. <laughs> I just think he's broken. Uh, Connie says, on my most recent cruise, I saw a number of people at the Martini Bar giving their bartenders extra bills, even though gratuities were no. Yeah, I mean, if they're that good, people are going to tip them. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, what is that? It, it is the absolute joy of cruising. Mm -hmm. um, what else has gone on this week? So... The Carnival Pride, well, we, we saw what happened there. They did not make it to Boston. Carnival had initially hoped that they might be able to go to Boston um, after their 12-day cruise. Turned out they can't. They're going to have to go to Norfolk. And Baltimore? Or is it Boston? You're right, Baltimore. I don't know why did I say Boston? Why I looked at you funny. It was, what's in Boston? Not in Boston. In Baltimore. They were supposed to disembark in Baltimore. They're still cleaning and clearing that bridge. But then, and there's another good example of people that are getting pissy. Pissy over the fact that the ship had to divert to Norfolk. Because, you know, it's clearly the cruise line's fault that they can't clear the bridge fast enough to suit them. You know, it's clearly the cruise line's fault that obviously the commercial traffic that needs to get in and out of that port is going to take priority over a cruise ship. Over your vacation? Or your vacation. But yeah, man, people get pissy about that. California Linda says she tips too. Which has been all kinds of crazy stuff. And people getting pissy. <laughs> Apparently there was one lady today. And I'm still looking for actually what she wrote. I'll find it eventually. But she got responded to because... Their family was looking so forward to going to Princess Key and spending the day on the beach on their cruise that when they couldn't ship couldn't stop there due to weather, it became the cruise from hell. The cruise from hell. So they're one of those. They're gonna find something wrong with everything they do after they didn't get their way. Basically, that it became the cruise from hell because they couldn't stop printing. It's funny, John Heald answered that. And Pensacola's response was, no, it didn't. No, it wasn't. It did not become a cruise from hell because you couldn't go to Princess. John, at least no one smuggled drugs this week. That we've heard yet. That we know of. Yeah, very, very true. But apparently they, you know, they were smuggling Bolivians instead. That was the MSC one where 60 people got deported oh, yeah. for having fake visas. I'm waiting to hear more about that particular story. Because MSC swears up and down. 
They checked their visas. They swore up and down they were good. They were cleared to cruise. They got to Spain and Spain's, Spain's like, these are crude fakes. Somebody going to have to answer a question somewhere as to how 60 people with fake visas got on a cruise ship. Yeah. Tilla says, one of our waiters noticed we ordered wine at dinner the first night, so he suggested a yes. good wine or cocktail every night, and man, it was good stuff. Them waiters are great at suggestions. I'm telling you, I've had the best meals with stuff that I wouldn't normally even consider because of some of the ingredients, but they're like, hey, try this, you know, give it a try. It's, it's amazing. You know, <laughs> We, we won a bottle of wine. Where did we win that bottle of wine? So you won the VIP experience, and we won the champagne, the wine, the special seats for all the shows. With the bottle of wine. Man, we spent three days trying to give that bottle of wine away Nobody to crew wanted, members. Nobody wanted it. So no, the crew members, they weren't sure if they were allowed to take it, remember? Yeah. We only tried to give this bottle of wine to crew members. It took a while before we finally got Well, the waiter the last night finally said, we'll, or the next to last night said, we'll either take it or we will find somebody that will take it. That will take it. Yeah. Trying to get crew members to take bottles of wine is the tough one. Yeah. I forgot about that bottle of wine. Yeah, that wine. Because we also had a, bo a bottle of champagne. But that was uh, that cruise that we took Dylan on that you won all that. Right. What did we do with the champagne? We left it in the room for the room steward. Oh, that's right. We got the room steward to, to take the bottle of champagne. Yeah, because we were going to do mimosas and nobody wanted mimosas. So that's right. Crazy cruise adventures. James says the thing that gets me about Baltimore with people complaining they forget there is two men still not have been found. Let these cruises take their time, clean things. Clean things up, and I pray they find them in soon. I do, I do too. And they like said, I have no problem. I mean, you're on a cruise, and remember, the majority of the passengers knew hey, there's a chance we're going to go over here. They plan to head for it. It's the small few with the loudest mouths. And I guarantee you, it was that one person who booked that morning flight out of Baltimore, knowing that the ship may not go there. And then complaining because they missed their, you know, 10 a.m. flight out of Baltimore when the ship went to Virginia. I guarantee you it was that person. Because there's one on every cruise. You know there is. Yeah, we've had that. How many times we've been waiting to disembark and there's some somebody trying to push their way to the front. I've got an early flight. i got to catch my flight in an hour. And like, cool, you ain't making your flight. You know, the Coast Guard ain't even third us to depart yet. But she's up front pushing, shoving, yelling at the uh, crew members that she must get off that ship. Yeah. She could say next time we or we should have given her the wine. She loves wine. Well, had you been on the ship, we absolutely would have. I'm, I'm, uh, me and wine just don't get along. I haven't found one that doesn't make my stomach hurt. Yeah, I just don't like it. I don't find it enjoyable at all. I've tried to find an enjoyable wine, but they all make my stomach hurt. So wow. I just gave up. Yeah. But yeah, if, if we ever have bottles of wine, someone's on the ship, we know they're yours. We won't drink them. And every once in a great while, somehow we end up with them. Yeah. So, and yet usually what we do, but, and we're not the only ones because man, the last couple of cruises we've been on, People have tried to be like, hey, you want some champagne? You want this bottle of champagne? We're not going to drink it. And we're like, yeah, uh, us neither. I mean, appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate the offer, but we're not going to drink it any more than you're going to drink it. Um, so clearly we're not the only ones that aren't big on those sorts of things because people have tried to give away to us. You know? Yeah. White wines from Germany are great. Uh, I know a couple of people that I've been on a cruise with that took home multiple bottles of wine because others did not care for wine. Connie says that's when it's good to belong to a Facebook group for a particular cruise. Someone would take it. 
Um, They're out of like the Facebook groups. Attila says, me too, haha, drop it off at my place in Houston. We'll actually don't drive through here. It's crazy. No, we don't drive through Houston. <laughs> I left that by mile marker 12. <laughs> yeah. You can swing out there and pick that up. Yeah. Uh, we avoid Houston at all. Avoid costs. Houston at all costs. But that's pretty much been the cruise news this week. I said there, there has been, unfortunately, there's been some tragedies. Um, I got a couple cruise stories still pending. Uh, we had a missing crew member off of a Holland America ship. Uh, it, it's been. She said laugh out loud. Okay, mile 12. <laughs> uh, no, it does seem like the last couple of weeks there's been more unfortunate incidents of cruising. Folks got uh, hurt and injured in Honolulu. Uh, one lady was killed in that particular incident in Honolulu. Get hit by a shuttle bus. Uh, Hopefully it's not a trend. The last couple of weeks, it's been some less than awesome stories, I guess. Sheikah says, I am not a heavy drinker, but I do enjoy wine. I live in wine country. We have a couple uh, wineries around here. We do? Yeah, there's actually one here in town. Shows you how much I know about wine. <laughs> I didn't even know we had wine here. There are a few wineries around here. Well, who knew? Apparently, we live in some wine. What kind of grapes grow here? I don't know. I don't it, drink wine. It, it's hot as crap here in Texas. Are you sure they're not raisins? Can you make wine out of raisins? I, I don't know. I don't drink wine. Uh, it says, I checked CCL, and they are only open through April 26th. We're watching. Yeah, let's say the best we heard is autumn, which came from uh, brand ambassador John Heald. So fall for us here in the United States. We call it fall here in Texas, but I guess in the rest of the world, the leaves turn colors. Mm -hmm. Ours just go brown and fall off the tree. Yeah, they're there one day and then they're gone. Yeah, they're gone one day. We call that fall. Um, and here in Texas, that could not possibly, there are times that's not even until January. So I assume we're talking September-ish time frame. See, even Attila knows. Head up north to Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg, lots of wineries there. Have we been to Fredericksburg? Yes. But we didn't go there for wineries. No, we went there for Enchanted Rock. Oh, that's right. You know, it was like miles and miles of cars to walk on a hill. Mm -hmm. I've been back since. Uh, James wants to know of any new ships coming to Galveston in 25. As it more than likely it will be 25 before I can cruise. Uh, d d d d I mean, none, no, none that I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, Attila, the Viva is still coming in. Attila says MSC is. Well, yeah, we're booked on that one, though. We're already straight up booked on that cruise. Uh, MSC is coming. The Viva is coming. Uh, Allure of the Seas is coming back when Harmony rotates out. Uh, Jubilee will still be here. Breeze will still be here. A couple of other Carnival ones are coming in and out. Uh, but nothing we hadn't talked about before. I'm waiting to see. I know that Galveston just got another $53 million to help uh, start the new terminal project down there they got some more money for that so i know things are on a roll I i'm really waiting for a celebrity to decide to give us a shot she can wonder where the is it prima or prime prima prima is going have not heard where's prima go i'm trying to think i think she goes back to florida I think. And then Linda at Attila. The, it's a great, fun, great town to visit. I really enjoyed the Museum of the Pacific. Uh, Lisa Marie, you guys are missing the beautiful fall foliage. It is gorgeous here in upstate New York when the fall hits. Oh, yeah. Y'all got the beautiful trees mm -hmm. and the oranges and the, 
yellows and stuff where your leaves turn colors. I've seen pictures. It looks awesome. I and mean, there's whole cruises dedicated to the fall foliage up on the East Coast, especially up into Canada and stuff in the fall. I believe it's absolutely beautiful. We just don't get that. We get leaves, brown, no leaves. Yeah. Nothing in between. Matilda says, I'm afraid I will miss Harmony before she leaves. I may not be able to cruise her. Yeah, that one's been bugging me, too. I keep trying to get on Harmony. I want to take Tiffany on Harmony. Maybe we'll shoot for Harmony in September. Okay. Nellie says, I wonder if that rumor is true for the new Icon class in 26. The exec said they didn't build that terminal for nothing. I'd say it's possible. It's absolutely possible with all of the new cruise ships coming out from Royal Caribbean. They did build that ship, that terminal. It can handle one of those Icon class ships. Wouldn't surprise me if they tried one of them out over here, especially as the, they continue to come out. Um, wouldn't surprise me if they move one of the first ones, one of the older ones over no. to Galveston. I don't think we'll get a brand spanking new one, but I think we could get one. James says, hopefully maybe another birthday cruise for me in January. Uh, Lisa Marie says, yes, I would love to take a cruise up to Canada in the fall. That would be a good cruise. Mm -hmm. um, California Linda is signing off. Thank you. See you next week. Go have fun in your cruise activities. Yes. Play the ukulele for us. Yes. Nellie says, Prima goes to Europe. We are cruising Norway. Um, Prima was the itinerary. There you go. There's that's what I love about the Somebody always knows the right answer. Yes. Okay, so Prima's going over back over to Europe. So, it, I don't know. I still have mixed feelings about the Prima. I really do have mixed feelings about the Prima. I, I, I didn't. Uh, she had some good qualities. She 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 did have some really good qualities, did not but like the deck space at all. But yeah, she had some concepts that just didn't make a lot of sense to me. So, I mean, I understand what the intent was when they built her, but the intent and the practice have not turned out to be the yeah. same thing. Until it says, funny to mention the fall cruises. I've been searching for one, but I'm so busy that time of year. Yeah, it, it can sometimes be hard to get out. Get out. Um, hard part for us is that time of year getting all the way over to the East Coast mm -hmm. to go up the East Side. That's actually the hardest part, because especially for us, our grandbabies are in North Carolina. We get all the way over there near North Carolina. Now it's a choice, to, you know, especially if times we do go on the cruise or see the grandbabies and grandbabies win every time. So, yes. Think of when we reach unlimited, we don't have to worry about time so much, then that might make a difference. We could visit grandbabies, take the cruise, and visit grandbabies some more. Nellie says, My boss went on it, hated it, yet booked the escape in December out of Galveston. Well, see, we didn't hate Norwegian. We just didn't care for, for the, the Prima. The Prima ship. And we went with James here in the chat with us. And he says it's the Prima that's off, not Norwegian that's off. Yeah. So the fact that he booked the escape, maybe he's, he may have a really good time, enjoy it, and say, you know what? The ship is the ship is awesome. It's just the Prima itself. Yeah. Uh, and CL still have another new class ship coming out in 26. So we will see what changes they make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before they switch. And yeah, no, the Prima is, uh, the Escape is not a Prima class ship. So, and we did tell James we were going to try NCL again to give it a fair shot. Because, yeah, I think didn't. the Escape is a breakaway class or the what is it, the breakaway plus class of ship. So, yeah, that's a whole, whole different animal. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and, and James even told us at the time, he said, yeah, the Prima's not, you know, how he has sailed on NCL in the past, even he said, hey, you know, give NCL another chance. Mm -hmm. Just pick something other than a Prima class ship. So that's still on our our agenda to do that as well. Pika says, I agree with you, Chris. It's the ship. Yeah. Because we didn't have a bad experience from Norwegian. The food was great. Mm -hmm. um, 
the atmosphere was good. The crew, of course, were spectacular. It's just that ship was off. It was super pretty and very nice and beautiful. And it, I mean, it was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But it, the layout was just not Lack, my favorite. Something to be desired. Lack, yeah, there we go. I don't want to be mean about it or rude about it because it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't perfect. Yeah. It wasn't as good as I think they could have been. And the lack of space in the venues was problematic the whole cruise. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and I get it. Their theory was, well, we'll have more venues with smaller spaces and the people will spread out, which sounds perfect on paper. Fewer crowds, people spread out around the that's, that's awesome sounding. But if you don't have something going on in all those venues simultaneously, and you only have one or two things going on in small venues, now you have the entire ship trying to stuff in those two small venues. It was good in theory, mm -hmm. not greatly done in practice, and it creates issues. Sean says, I can't believe it's been over an hour already. Have a great night. See you next week. Oh, God, it has been. Yep, I think we're going to get ready to also shut this down. Can't believe I've been talking for an hour already. Talk about what you like, and it goes by quick. Yeah, like conversation with everybody. The Prima was not a favorite for me, but the Escape, which I did an Alaskan cruise on, was my favorite. Yeah. So, and with the Escape coming, you know, so it is the Escape, the one that's coming to Galveston. Yeah, we may have to, we may have to give the Escape a try. Because I'd like to have a, I'd like to come off a of Norwegian with a different opinion about their ships. I don't have a bad one. I just want to be clear. I did not have a bad cruise. I did not have a bad experience. But I'd like to come off with feeling a little bit different about their ship layout. Well, it says, y'all have a great night. See you later. Sheikah says, I love the bliss. Yeah, it's just, it's just the layout of the Prima. But thank you, everybody, for being here. We really, really appreciate it. Because if I don't stop, I will keep on talking. And we'll be sitting in here talking for hours and hours on end. And I know we got stuff going on. Everybody's got stuff going on, including us. But thank you guys for being here. We really, really, really appreciate it. Tons of fun, like always. Yes. And we praised crew members. There's nothing wrong with that. But like always, we'll see you guys. Out on the high seas. Good night, everybody. <laughs>